Thank you so much, Mr. Mboko, Honorable MEC, leaders of government in Gauteng, colleagues of Bongani, the Kalishe and Dodana family, friends who are here, people that have worked with Bongani in particular in his department. It gives me great joy to spend some moments talking about a very dear friend, brother, comrade. This is somebody I've journeyed with for over 37 years. And I never thought we would get to this point. But here we are. And I want to preface my comments today by doing two thank yous. One is a thank you to you, MEC, which I did earlier when you came to visit the home. You simply do not have any idea how much you rejuvenated Bongani's passion by the appointments that you gave him to take on this difficult task. To members of COPTA, I also want to say thank to you. You have absolutely no idea how much he loved you and how much he would go on and on about all of you. Many of you, I don't know your faces. I know some names, but I know lots of stories. Because Bongani's life was the work that you all did. So today I stand here thinking about what to say about someone who, who was larger than life and who lived life to the fullest. What aspects would I touch? What aspects would I leave out? During the week, so many have spoken about Bongani, the family man, about Ubebi, Gatami, Mdanam, as Tami would say, a doting father to Kwe Kwe, not all, a loving son to Mambel a caring brother to his sisters, a member of the Timber Royal family, a former student leader, a seasoned political activist, a compassionate community leader, a keen scholar, an organic intellectual. I thought, do I talk about all of the crazy things we used to do over the last 37 years? I thought, no, maybe this is not the moment for it. Today, I wanted to talk about something very different. I didn't talk, want to talk about Bongani's life in the struggle. I wanted to talk about something that is not often spoken about, and that is his passion for the public service and why he chose the public service and about leadership in the public service. And this is something him and I shared over a long while. And so I thought, let me speak about that today rather than regaling you about stories about all the mischief we used to get up to. Members of COPTA would know that the Auditor General released the latest audit results for municipalities. This is something I follow and I've followed for many years. I had another friend who's departed, Kimi Magwetu, and we used to spend a lot of time talking about 
these results because I'm passionate about what happens in municipalities. This time around, it was the new AG, Ms. Sakani Malulek. And she had some profound words to say. And those are words that I hope would reverberate across the whole of the country. Because she was giving us a warning. When she looked at the dire results of municipalities, she gave us this warning, and I quote, it is the type of leadership we deploy and appoint to specific roles that define how an institution runs. Without dealing with the quality of leadership that's in charge of institutions, we're not gonna get this right, close quote. And I thought, wow, sit down, my sister. You, you, you've captured it. You can develop thousands of capacity problems. You are not going to capacitate a corrupt and incompetent individual. You've picked the wrong person, period. And the rot starts from there. These views are echoed by Mr. Joel Nechitenze, who cautions all organizations and institutions about the type of leaders they choose. And to paraphrase him, he says, a defective leadership not only holds back the attainment of national objectives, it also presents a conundrum for an organization or an institution. In that, to rationalize its bad choice, an institution or organization has to lower itself to embrace those defects of the leader it has chosen as its own defects. Steadily, these defects of the individual leader become by default the collective property of the organization, its own blind spot and its subliminal attributes in the public imagination. Ladies and gentlemen, leaders cast a long shadow over the organizations they lead. Leadership, therefore, matters. It matters a great deal. Character, integrity, and sound values matter even more. How many stories have we heard over the last 18 months or so of corruption, malfeasance, corporate greed, abuse of public funds, bribery, and racketeering. How many great names and leaders who come with great struggle credentials yet today find themselves mired in scandals because they have limited capacity to self-restrain. They get entangled in venality, hook, line, and sinker. Each of us sitting here today in this physical room or in this virtual room can be captured tomorrow. How do we save ourselves from unethical behavior? What separates those who are corrupt from those who stay in the path? How can we produce more Bongani delicious? How can you stop eulogizing those who've done well and just act in the manner they've acted while they're alive? Nechitenze advises us, both current and future leaders, both private and public sector. He says, the cadres of social change need to be inspired by a transcendent posture. They should be able to resist the constraining and corrupting influences of the current system and not to bow to its dictates as if they are in the natural order of things. Stealing is not natural. Being corrupt is not natural. Abusing public funds in being involved in corporate greed is not natural. 
he concludes that it requires clarity of thoughts on the value system that should underpin the vision of a democratic and equitable society. So to understand Mongani Tulise is to understand what Nechitenze said many years ago. That Mongani has stayed throughout. He's maintained the faith. And I stand here very proud as a friend and comrade and for his family that he leaves this world without a single blemish to his name. He was not captured by any faction. He was not bought by any corrupt businessman. He did not belong to any special interest. He was not tempted or seduced to use public funds for his personal or family benefits. How difficult is that for us to just do our jobs and do them to the best of our ability for those that need us the most. So Bongani was a special breed of a civil servant. He was schooled, as MEC Lebohang says, in the values of the liberation movement. He was highly groomed in the ranks of the student movement, grounded in the struggles of his people in the Eastern Cape, accomplished academically, and he worked his way through various administrations at local, provincial, and national level. As a leader in the public service, all his colleagues describe him as empowering, engaging, and an inspirational leader. He was highly committed to improve the lives of ordinary people. When I think of Bongani's leadership, when I think of the standard of leadership, I think of the leadership standard defined by Kauzes and Posner. And I quote, each leader has to place the people at the center, be responsive to their needs, respectful of their wishes and accountable to them. This requires us as leaders to be selfless in our contribution, inclusive in our decisions, humble in our behavior and inspiring in our actions. If we do this, our joy will not be how exalted we may be, how elevated our positions are, how much wealth we may amass or how much power we can have. It must come from a deeper and special place where others benefit, grow, and prosper because of our actions. That's leadership. This was Bongani at his very best. He always placed the needs of the people at the center. He was always responsive to their needs, always respectful of their wishes, and always accountable to them. Bongani was selfless in his contribution, inclusive in his decisions, humble in his behavior, and inspiring in his actions. In over 30 years as a civil servant, his joy was not how exalted he was. It was not how elevated he was. It was not how much wealth he could amass or how much power he could have. His joy was in the improvement of the lives of ordinary people and the growth of the people that he worked with. That was Bongani's mission. You see, ladies and gentlemen, if service is beneath you, then leadership is truly beyond you. If you cannot serve, you cannot lead. Bongani was an accomplished leader already, as a student leader. He was the first ANC provincial secretary one of the rising stars in the ANC. But he had the presence of mind to choose the public service over everything else. Bongani could have had any job he wanted in the Eastern Cape in the beginning of the administration in 1994. He could have been a mayor, could have been an MEC, could have been a premier, 
could have been a cabinet minister, could have had a job in the private sector, but he chose to be a lifelong public servant with a specific emphasis on local government. So I want to leave you with some of the lessons that come from Bongani's career in the public service. And I'm just going to list them and not dwell on them. In the, published, uh, in the published article, I will dwell on them. The first one is leave a track record of success. The second one is a leader model the way. Walk the talk. Do as you say others should do. Be exemplary. The third one is a commitment to lifelong learning and development. You cannot lead if you are not developing yourself. If you are stale, no new ideas, no new learning, just regurgitating the same slogans. Our complex problems need new ideas and innovative solutions. So leaders themselves have to learn. Leaders have to school themselves into what the leader's thinking is. The fourth one is build durable institutions. When you leave a place, people must go back and see what have you built. There are many people I see uh, in my work and they show me a CV. I said, no, 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 I don't want to see the CV of the roles you play. What did you do? What did you leave behind? Who did you groom? What did you do? The fifth one is make a difference in the lives of people. I'm sure all of your management meetings you will know, Bongani will ask you, what does this have to do with the people? Every department he went to, it would be the same thing. When he was in public works, it was the extended public works program. He would say, In everything he did, it was the people at the center. The sixth is about professionalism and ethics in the public service. The public service has to be professional. The best must be attracted to the public service. Everyone who is brilliant and good must aspire to come and work in the public service. I say so because I was a public servant myself. We must attract the best to solve our challenges. Those of you who worked with Bongani will know Punctuality was everything. Can't come late. Bongani would close the door. You're late. Your presentation must be right. You must have your facts here. You can't have that thing with the MEC is asking questions and you say, well, basically, the issue is this, that. Uh, no, no, none of that. Professional. Know your stuff. If you're being asked those questions on television, representing your department, or presenting at Scopa, when somebody looks there, they must say, I want to join the public service. Set the tone. Set the tone about your expectations to people. Lastly, inspire with passion. So ladies and gentlemen, as I conclude, and members of the Kalisha and Dorana family. I hope through the testimonies you heard today, you better understand the most, the most hidden part of Bongani's life, which was only visible to those he worked with and those he impacted. Now you know his telling contribution to this nation. May this message of his life be a message to all South Africans that they are, and there are still many, honest, hardworking, ethical, conscientious, diligent public servants. All they need is the space 
and the support to their, do their work to help communities. May his life message also be a message that one day a young public servant or a student researching about public service can find out about Bongani's life and be inspired to join the public service. Can also Bongani's life and his great lessons also be a wake-up call to those public servants who spend their time looking at the clock and not delivering to people who treat with people with disdain, who don't deliver the services that people deserve. Bungani could do it. I am proud to stand here and say that my brother, my friend, my comrade leaves the stage with an unblemished record. He leaves the Galicia and Dodana family with a proud legacy of service, humility, selflessness, delivery, and, professional, and professionalism. Sister Ami, oh baby, Wako has made you proud. And he has set a great example for his two angels on earth, Uzotolo no Kweko. As his friends and comrades, we have lost the first among equals, a role model, a guide, a counselor, and a comrade who would easily pass through the eye of the needle. Ambagagu Shemtem, Nkulawam, You've shown that there's no greater challenge and no greater honor than to be in the public service. You've shown us that to give real service, you must add something which cannot be bought or measured with money, and that is sincerity and integrity. Through you, we have learned that the public service is more than doing an efficient and an honest job but it must be complete dedication to the people and to the nation. Finally, you are an example to be emulated, that if you make the choice to serve the public, public service, then serve the public, not yourself or your interests or that of your family or friends. Go matiba, go mbegi, go susul, no tamb, ke mego skuyo, kuzwilitu. Sulashilum sola, matiba, uzamile wakumza. Ikaekwa, lilere nati. I thank you.